Hi, this video is a Demonic Gorillas quick guide. Demonic Gorillas are a mid-game, high-level NPC you can kill during and after the completion of Monkey Madness 2. You first encounter them during the quest and are required to kill them to move on and complete the quest. After the completion of the quest, you may return to the same place you found them to kill them more. They are located inside the crash site cavern behind the tree gnome stronghold. And the reason that people kill gorillas is because of their drops, which come in at about 2.5 million GP per hour. At a 1 in 300 chance, they can drop a Zenite shard, which is coming in around 12.8 million GP. This can be used to make Zenite jewelry, which is essential for all accounts, including Iron Man. They have other drops as well, such as ballista parts and other random good drops. Demonic Gorillas use all three combat styles to attack. They will change combat styles after missing three hits consecutively in whatever style they are using. On top of using the three normal attack styles, he also has a special attack, which is the Boulder Toss. You'll know he's doing this because he gets on his legs and pounds his chest, and then after a couple ticks, a boulder will fall on the tile you were standing. All you have to do is move out of the way, and I would not tank this, definitely have to move out of the way because it does about 33% of your total health as damage. And this also does not count as one of his three missed attacks to switch a normal attack style, this is just an additional attack on top of that. They are also able to use protection prayers and will switch to the player's last use combat style after taking 50 or more damage. With that being said, you're going to have to bring two separate styles to switch and kill them seeing as how they will be switching the prayer. They have a pretty high magic defense so the necessary and most recommended way to kill them is by using melee and ranged. Demonic gorillas also count as black demons so if you're on a black demon slayer task feel free to wear a slayer helmet. Speaking of the Slayer Helmet, let's talk about other gear to wear while killing Demonic Gorillas before I show you an example trip. So as you can see here, uh, this is my Slayer Helmet example setup. You can see I have a mix of melee and ranged gear on. First, I'm using a pretty much full melee with the Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, Berserker Ring, Dragon Defender, Varax Plate Skirt, Blessed Dehyde Top, Arc Light, and a Blessing. This obviously can be changed to how you see fit if you have Hydra Gloves instead of Barrows, Prims instead of Dragon Boots, or other things like that. If you want to go for a more DPS setup and you're a little higher level, of course you can switch out the gear and do more switches, like instead of taking Varax and the Blessed Dehyde, you could theoretically just go full best in slot melee or bring Bandos and just a range switch or something similar, but this is a pretty safe uh, mid-level average gear setup, and especially because you don't have to switch as much. Speaking of which, in the inventory we have our ranged switch, which is just going to consist of the blowpipe and back slot, or the Ava's assembler, and then we already have that ranged top for the magic defense, and we don't need to switch anything else. And then in the actual inventory, some things I recommend is going to be a royal seed pod, which you obtain during Monkey Madness 2. This is really useful for teleporting and banking to get there and after you're done. I have a rune pouch which you can store different drops in. I know that there's death and law runes commonly but I pretty much just bring my uh, rune pouch with me everywhere. I have two anglers to overheal, a divine super combat and ranging. Obviously you don't have to bring divine if you're an iron man you can just bring a normal or you can even bring a super set if you wish. I'm bringing about six super restores. Uh, you theoretically can just use prayer if you'd like and then the rest of my inventory is going to be food so I'm bringing manta ray. You can swap out one manta ray for a ceridomen potion but I don't find that too necessary. And then for example if you're not on a slayer task and you're not going to wear the slayer helmet then you obviously can just wear something like a Nata's Knot or maybe a Face Guard or something similar. You can do this at a pretty low level. Uh, you don't even have to use a Blowpipe. If you have a Carol's Crossbow or maybe even just a Rune Crossbow with Diamond Bolts, you can go right ahead and use that. It'll work. So now that I'm actually done gearing up, I'm just going to go ahead and show you an example trip right here. I'm not on a Slayer task because I actually have Black Demons locked. So I'm going to go ahead here and pre-eat an Angler, boosting my HP up to 121. Now, now, the reason I do that is because when you take a divine, it will damage you. Uh, I believe it's by about 
10, maybe 11, I could be wrong, damage. So the idea is I pre-use my angler at the bank, and then when I get there, I pop my divines, and then I eat another angler, boosting me back to that 120, so then I have room for my switches and one less inventory spot. Now obviously, there probably is better ways to go about this. You don't necessarily have to do the bank standing angler trick. You can just bring your two anglers and then do it there, but that's how I do. So as you can see, I use the Royal Seed Pod and I run north behind the Grand Tree because this is where you actually go kill the gorillas. As you can see, there's the cavern entrance. I believe it's called the Crash Site Cavern or something similar. And we're just going to run all the way there and in. So as you can see here, I took my divines and I took my extra angler and we're going to run in here. Now I have entity hider on, which is why it looks like a ghost town and I'm quickly going to turn that off. But as you can see here, we're already getting attacked. As you see, he is using melee because he is boxing me upside the head and he's currently protecting from mage. After I do 50 damage, you will see he's going to switch to protecting from melee right there, which is when we're going to use the ranged switch. So on the attacking side, that's pretty much all you do. As soon as you do 50 or more damage, he will switch to whatever you did the damage with, and then you will switch your gear. So in terms of protecting against him, after he misses three attacks, whether that just be splashing or trying to hit you through prayer, he will change his attack style. So you can't 100% for a fact predict what attack style he, uh, he will switch to. Essentially how you do it is, say he's using ranged. That means he can only switch to melee or mage. A tip to do is stand two tiles away from him because when he's done attacking uh, and you count in your head the three attacks, if he starts moving towards you, that means he's going to melee because obviously he's trying to get in range to melee you. But if he keeps standing still, then you obviously know that you can just use protect from mage or range. They only have a total of about 380 hit points, so you can kill them pretty fast. Obviously, I have uh, all 90 combat stats, so I might be killing them a little faster than you would, especially if you're an Iron Man and you don't really have the best gear. But it really is super simple, and especially for the 2.8 million or so GP that it is per hour, these are actually pretty worth to do, especially if you're on a Slayer task, though uh, they are really not AFK. I mean, you can't really AFK here at all. So as you can see here, I'm just quickly working on them, making light work of them. He's using mage on me currently. And sometimes when I do my melee hit, I actually step back a tile just to make sure uh, to see if he'll drag with me. Otherwise, I know to use uh, range or mage, depending on which ones he was not using anyway. Now really all there is to it, I mean, you kind of just have to get into a groove in it. You might struggle with your first few kills, but you'll eventually understand it. Uh, it basically just comes down to if he's using mage after he misses three, he's either going to use melee, which he'll walk towards you, or range. Now if he's using melee, uh, I don't believe there is a way you can predict it. You're pretty much just going to have to tank a hit, and then you'll know to tank three additional hits after that by using the correct prayer. If you want to use spec here, I think some people bring the Ceridoman God Sword. I would just recommend using your blowpipe specs to get a little more healing, but I'm usually a little more aggressive, so I just use the Arc Light specs because it actually uh, reduces his defense. And if you don't want to use the Arc Light for whatever reason, maybe it's out of charge, I would just say use the best in slot melee that you have, whether it be a rapier. Fang, uh, Dragon Scimitar, Abyssal Tentacle, Abyssal Whip, so on. So after I kill this one here, I'm going to show what it looks like to bank and get out of here. It's actually really simple because you're just going to use it the same way you got here, which is the Royal Seed Pod. As you're going to see, I'm going to pick up these Javelin Heads and then teleport out of here. Because what you can do is just simply go up this ladder and then run southwest and you will get to a bank. So as you see, I'm just going to deposit everything that I got from the loot. Obviously, it wasn't a full trip. I killed about 8, and I probably could have killed maybe 30 to 40 uh, if I was good with my switches. Maybe even more if I got some good food drops. Unfortunately, in the 8, I did not get the 1 in 300 drop. But you see, as I'm done gearing up, I just simply go to my house, 
drink from the restore pool, and then go ahead and teleport back and repeat the process over again. It's really that simple. So that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. Hopefully it was informative. If you have any questions, obviously just ask in the comments. If you need gear suggestions, I will answer them. I always read my comments. So thank you so much for watching and like, subscribe, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. I don't really use Twitter, but if you want to, I don't know, go ahead. But yeah, see you.